Welcome to our show, Umbrellas of Hope. We are committed to enrich the life of members of the veteran and military community by connecting them to the resources that they need. We advocate for professional and entrepreneurial opportunities and facilitate conversations of hope, empowerment, and creativity. To reduce military and civilian transition difficulties and to help our veteran and entrepreneurs' families to strive. Hi, I'm Yorka, your host. We invite you to be part of this journey as we, together, bring a positive change on new beginnings, opportunity, and success. Our new mini series will be introducing the art of business to share with you how it can enhance your life, your community, and your future. Please welcome Dr. Robert Garcia, the war strategist. He's a coach and the owner of Chief Magazine. He will be talking to you about how to make your art and your business visible. Stay tuned. All right, thank you so much, and Erica, that was a great intro. So for those of you who are watching, I am Dr. Rob Garcia out of San Diego, California. And I am a business visibility strategist, which means that I teach people how to get tremendous amounts of visibility. And so this is kind of an interesting training for me because it's it's in my wheelhouse, but art is not in my wheelhouse. But why not take the visibility strategies I use for clients and teach teach artists how to make their works more um, more perceptive to their audience? So what I'm going to talk about today is a couple of ways that you can take your art pieces, regardless of what they are, and make them so visible that people will be lined up to buy them. Sounds good, right? Um, traditionally, artists and craftspeople are very good at their craft, but they're not always good at getting the word out or doing anything outside of like a Facebook post or you know, sending out an email blast or something saying, hey, I've got something for sale. Uh, so we need to tap into the creativity of it. We need to tap into increasing the perceived value of your work. And so understand that the advertising and marketing is just as important as the beauty and value of the piece itself. Uh, and this, this, when I say artwork or piece, this can be sculptures, this can be paintings, this can be watercolor, it can be whatever, whatever your uh, chosen art is. So the first thing you'll want to do is learn to write a description of the piece. And remember that you have to write descriptions and terms that are in line with your audience. So a $100 piece of art is going to be written a lot different from a $25,000 enormous wall piece, okay? In the sense that the people that are buying the more sophisticated and larger and pricier pieces are going to want very strongly written descriptors. They're going to want very good photography. They're going to want an amazing presentation, okay? So you have to step it up a little bit. So what I did is I went to artistsnetwork.com and I started looking up art terms. And so I'm going to read a few of these just as a sample so that you can understand like what's out there. So like I said, you want to make sure that you're writing at a level that your potential buyer understands, but you don't want to go over their head if that makes sense. Art terms was fascinating um, for artistsnetwork.com because there were about 25 terms in there and they were very, some of them I'd, I'd never heard before in my life. So you want to you want to write at a level that is understandable, but that also shows knowledge and passion for what you've created. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about, uh, and I'm just going to go over some basic art terms you can use for your descriptors. All these are listed at artistsnetwork.com. So when we're describing our artwork, okay, you can use a word like narrative. 
what is a narrative? A narrative tells a story. So if you're talking about the narrative of the photo or the, a narrative of the painting, what are the events happening? In it? Okay. Uh, another one I saw was figurative. So if something is a figurative piece, it means it represents something. Um, Avant-garde means experimental or unusual. If you have a piece that's, that's outside of the ordinary or sculpted differently or using uh, very creative materials, uh, that be, would be, uh, be avant-garde. Allegory is related to moral or political meaning. So if it's got a deeper meaning that is, that is uh, judgment or morality-based, that would be an allegory. So it's kind of symbolic. And then texture. Uh, for, for example, for a paint piece, does the paint seep into the surface or does it build on it or are there unusual materials required? So all of these specified terms are going to increase the power of the description and it's going to make the art stand out because it's captured very, very well versus something that's very simplistic. You don't want something that just says, oh, I used a lot of blue and reds and I painted this on uh, 18 by 11 canvas. You know, that's, that's not very inspiring. That's not very, it's not creating value for the potential buyer. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the first thing I'm gonna tell you is to learn to write a description using these terms, using specialized terms. Uh, you're gonna wanna talk about the themes that are captured by the piece, whether it's sculpture or painting. You're gonna wanna talk about the creation process, um, materials and accessories that went into it. So you can break down the materials you use, the type of paints or the type of clay, if it's a sculpture, uh, the type of canvas, is it a specific kind of wood? Um, is it an outwardly framed piece? Like what kind of wood went into the outward frame? Is the frame carved? Does it have ornate etchings? Um, all of these things are a part of the description for the actual physicality of the piece. <clears throat> and then you can also say, oh, there are similarities in this to Escher or to uh, Thomas Kincaid or any famous artist that, you know, th this, this painting is inspired by or has many similarities seen in the works of, you know, whoever, Rembrandt or uh, any of the, the classical painters. Um, similarities are very good for written descriptions. Okay, the next thing to do to increase the value and the potential for your sale is the actual physical presentation of the piece. Now understand the use of light, shadow, the background, and color, very important for presentation. And so when you're taking photographs of your piece that you're gonna list, if you're gonna list it online, um, start looking at ways, and you can go on Pinterest for this or do a Google search, but start looking at interesting creative ways to make a presentation presentation for your feature that emphasizes the use of light, the use of color, the use of strategic shadow. Uh, all these things are important for a, a visually stunning display. Um, with that, photographs. So when you're documenting your art piece for sale, you're going to want to make sure that you have high resolution photos. So make sure you have a good camera and the settings are optimized for the, the light. Uh, and you have multiple angles for the piece. You're going to want some overhead. You're going to want some diagonal. You're going to want some straight on side with the wall in the back or whatever's in the, in the, the background. Uh, photographs, very important because the higher resolution of your photographs, the more perceived value it's going to have. Uh, you show me anything that's photographed poorly and it's going to look bad in the eyes of the buyer. Always. Photography is everything. Um, so now we have our presentation. We've written the description of the art piece, right? We've taken all these photographs and it looks amazing. What do we do with it? How do we find a buyer? So in order to get this thing visible, this is where we step into my wheelhouse, um, we can list it on several sites. And once a piece, you can actually do a buildup to the release of a piece and to get people uh, on board following its journey, right? So let's say seven days before you're going to have the actual sale, and you also have to decide, is it going to be just a straight up first person that buys it, or are you going to have an auction? Auctions are a great way to get people competing for something they really, really love. So that's something to think about as well. Um, but I would actually do preview photos 
and about seven days before, start creating a buzz, start collecting names, start dropping a photo or two and saying, hey, guys, this is going on sale in seven days. Who would like to who would like to be uh, tagged or when it goes live for a listing? Uh, and then write down those names and then tag those people when you start putting this thing out there. OK, so <clears throat> uh, the four places that I would put an art piece for sale would be artsy.com because they have an auction option but they also have access to thousands of people globally and they've got a lot of tutorials for selling art it's a great site uh amazon facebook sell anything groups and then your facebook stories believe it or not why because they're very visually oriented and you'll get a lot of eyes on whatever it is that you're selling uh, Facebook stories get a lot of engagement, particularly if you're using bright colors, strong fonts, and just a dramatic message. Hey, uh, my latest art piece for sale, uh, sales start, you know, message me for details. Boom. Um, and then the last thing you can do once you've done these four, I would actually start doing a series of Facebook lives showing the art piece or holding it if you can. And that way, uh, writing down more names as people are getting involved in it. Um, and that way, when the, the actual sale opens up, you can invite those people is a press release and a press release, believe it or not, because it's Nyerka, I'm going to, I'm going to give away something, uh, very, very valuable to anyone watching this. Here is how you get a free press release for your art piece. You go to a website called prlog.org. That is prlog, L-O-G dot org, O-R-G. You can write a free press release using the site about your art piece, about your release. And all I would do for a sample headline is your name releases new piece of art and then the name of it or the description of it. Uh, keep it nice and short. You get one photo in a press release, so have a piece of the artwork. And then in the press release itself, remember, you're not writing an article. You're writing an announcement. And so you're just going to want to talk about the history of the piece, the materials, you know, go back to your description and just kind of do that. A press release typically has a certain order. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be headline. It's going to be announcement in the first paragraph. It's going to be a little bit of supplemental information in the second paragraph, some art or industry statistics for the third, a quote, and then contact information uh, for the final thing, kind of a call to action. Uh, with your website, your phone number, your name, all this different stuff, you know, for contact info, blah, blah, blah. That's how you write a very good press release. And then pop it on the PR, uh, prlog.org. And then once it's live and your page is live, you can actually put that on your social media. You're like, hey, guys, here's the press release for my new art piece, blah, blah, blah. And that will capture some, some attention as well. You can pop that on social media, your Facebook stories, a LinkedIn article, all this different stuff. You're, so you're actually using one medium right? A press release and now creating four to five pieces of content about your art piece. And then also the Facebook sell anything groups are amazing. You can list out your art piece on the online Craigslist or sell anything and whatever your hometown is, um, all this different stuff. It's free and it gets in front of a lot of eyes. So anyway, that wraps up my presentation. Thank you so much, Nyerka. advice us how the presentation or your product matters and it's as important as your art as your own product finding interesting ways and creative ways that emphasize the use of light and shadow to make it even more appealing high resolution pictures that will increase the perceived value so we actually get paid more for our work what should you
make sure you pay attention to those little details. It gave you a, a great resource where you can submit your free press release and make an announcement. Invite people to come over uh, to your opening to see it and they can, you know, buy from you. Share with us on social media, umbrellas, hashtag umbrellas of hope. So or submit by email uh, our contest at amorumbrella.com. It's selfie of you showing us your art and tag Amor Umbrella. But listen, tell us the story of why you created the, your art. You secreted words. So remember, a selfie or you with your art or your product and tell us why, why you created a product. What inspired you? What's the story behind? And use the descriptive words. You know, he gave you a couple resources where you can find those descriptive words for your art and add that in your description. I can't wait to hear, I can't wait to see all your art, I appreciate it. And you never know how many people are going to see the art. So I challenge you, send that to us. Let's share your art with the world because we need to share as much beauty as possible and we need to inspire more people to create. So let's start a revolution about creativity, please. Thank you. Can't wait to see it. Are you ready to be an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurs are confident, positive, creative, resourceful, and resilient people who are faced with problems and they create solutions. If this sounds like you, tune in to Founders Time to learn more and start your journey. You have and will continue to enjoy this journey in creativity with us. In today's world, where artificial intelligence, the internet of things, advanced science, and autonomous vehicles is our new normal. Creativity has never been more important. This new mini-series of Umbrellas of Hope was created in order to inspire you and empower you by giving you the creative confidence to redesign the world around you, to create new solutions that are invaluable for today's society, powered by your vision, your, your own unique talents, and limited only by your imagination. Our world, our society, our future needs you.